Hi everyone, this is Patricia Lamont, co-author of the Surviving ED blog on the HealthyPlace.com. So this week I want to talk to you about a question, I want to answer a question that's been asked to me many times, both in them, you know, one-on-one, live, and also on social media, which is uh, how, how to cope with food anxiety, but not related to social triggers or eating with people. Uh, that's a post that I, I actually wrote about a little bit earlier in the summer, but how to deal with food anxiety um, one-on-one, just, you know, on your own, going on about your everyday life, um, feeling guilty uh, about eating or uncomfortable eating, regardless of the fact that it, it's taking place with others in front of you, um, how to cope with that. Um, first of all, I want to be very clear that I, I do have food anxiety. I think I've talked about uh, that before. And even though I am recovered from bulimia, it doesn't mean that there aren't days where I actually feel uncomfortable eating. Um, not because I have to do it in front of other people, as I mentioned, but because it's uh, something that if I'm really stressed, is going to be um, at the bottom of my priority list of things to do and kind of time to take for, for myself uh, to, to refuel and, and replenish. Uh, so, number one, it's definitely something that I have a lot of compassion about, you know, if, if you or any of you suffers from this, because I go through it, um, and I know that it's, it's difficult to stop that, like, little hamster in its wheel. Uh, I often compare it to that, the, the anxiety for me that accompanies food uh, uh, when I'm going through a difficult uh, time, you know, just a stressful day, or I feel like I'm not going to be able to get things done, or if in my personal life there is something more stressful going on. So the number one thing that I want to kind of like maybe stress is just give you as a, as a tip, and by the way, these are all tips that, you know, I'm not a professional, it's really just from my own personal experience working with professionals, but also just developing certain things, certain tools um, that have helped me along the way. So number one, uh, if I start to kind of feel uncomfortable uh, about the fact that I have to stop and eat, if I'm stressed out, if I feel like there's a knot in my stomach for whatever reason that has nothing to do with food to begin with, I recognize and I stop, you know, what I'm doing and I recognize the fact that I am freaking out and there is a problem and I need to take a step back and take some time for myself. And if it's around lunchtime or dinner or whatever time it is of the day that it's you know, for feed, um, and I make the effort to stop and realize that I have to take a break, and that I'm freaking out of it. So <laughs> already the beauty in admitting that there's a problem is that you're owning it, and you feel probably more, well, I feel, I won't speak for you, but I feel right away like I'm in control a little bit more, and it helps me find constructive solutions, you know, in terms of just going through that hump. So number one is I realize that I'm freaking out, that there's a problem, and I own it, and I sit down and I stop whatever it is I'm doing, and I uh, try to tell myself and remind myself that number one, I will be fine, I will be able to get through whatever it is that I'm going through, and number two, that I probably need to take a break and eat something, or just drink something, to just, you know, like, take a breather, and acknowledge the fact that I need to uh, replenish myself and, and take care of myself so that I can be there for others and that I can also uh, that I can also be there and show up in my own life for myself because if you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to take care of anyone else. So that's the first step. Second step is if I'm really struggling with, oh, I have to eat but I don't feel like it or I feel guilty, um, I feel like I, I just, you know, sometimes like I think of body image, I think of what food represents, and it kind of triggers a few things, or, or I kind of start, the anxiety starts to, to just kind of, you know, like the hamster in its wheel that doesn't stop. Um, I kind of try to pinpoint what is the problem, like what's actually going on. Am I stressed out because I'm on a deadline? Am I stressed out because I have to work on a project that I'm not really inspired by? Or on the contrary, am I like completely wired because I'm so excited by so many things I have to work on that I don't even, like I, I will read five or six things at once and kind of um, have a hard time just channeling that energy. And as a result, I don't know what to eat and I don't know what what's going to feel good or actually what I need. 
So if you're able to kind of pinpoint the feeling behind your behavior or why you're feeling a certain, the, the feeling behind why you're acting a certain way or thinking certain thoughts, um, I find for me that it really helps. And it will usually kind of rationalize a lot with, what's going on. And I'll be able to probably make the decision that, you know what, I'm actually very hungry and I'd really like to eat right now. Or I'll have a snack. And then I'll take more time like after. But really, um, I, I, the knot in my stomach is not from, from too much food or, or, or not enough. Uh, it's really just because I'm stressed about something else or whatever feeling that is actually taking place that has nothing to do with the food. And, um, and those are the two steps really, you know, that I really encourage you to kind of try to go through. Um, because if you take ownership of what's going on and that you're kind of freaking out, um, there's so much relief in that. <laughs> and the second step is really to try to pinpoint what is what is actually triggering you, what's going on, what feeling is behind this this kind of mini um, you know freak out or or uh, you know just feeling a lot of sores. Uh, that will probably help you to realize it has nothing to do with food. And in my case, it very little has to do with food most times. Um, and uh, and then eventually I'm able to, to, to then decide, am I eating now, am I eating later? And those are the steps that I kind of, um, I try to implement in my, in my busy day. And I really encourage you to try to explore that. Um, another thing I wanted to really uh, encourage you to do is read the post that Jess wrote last week. It's a really good post about um, the role of her dietitian and her recovery. And uh, I found a lot of, um, I found it really interesting because it's often something that we um, overlook, you know, the role of someone teaching proper nutrition and recovery. We try to focus um, very often on, on the feelings and what's behind the behavior, which is completely understandable and, and at the root of the problem with the mental illness. But uh, then the action and the behaviors really have to do with knowing what you're, what you're doing with food. And that's also really important. So if you combine maybe the tips, you know, that I've given you today or try to to look into them and see how it feels if you try them. And I think if you uh, take maybe some knowledge away from her post, um, you might be able to um, to get some um, to get some support maybe that way. It's, it's a form of peer support, and to realize that um, you know we're all we're all in this together. Anyone who reads this blog who has questions about recovery or about eating disorders, wherever you're at in your journey. And uh, it's like a thread, you know, you, you read one post, you see a blog, and you kind of put it together, and you see different facets of recovery and different facets of what we each do in our recovery, and that might be um, the pieces of the puzzle that you might need for your own. Um, so I encourage you to leave us, um, you know, comments below. Uh, it would be my pleasure to reply as, um, you know, as quick and efficiently as I can. And if you're on Twitter, please, um, you know, via my profile, write me DMs. I, I, I always, uh, you know, or tweet me questions or comments. It's always my pleasure to respond. Thank you so much and good luck in your recovery.